The departure of Dalton Schultz to Houston means there'll be some new sheriffs in town at that tight end position. But thankfully, the Cowboys' younger tight ends, Jake Ferguson and Peyton Hendershot, really solidified themselves in that Cowboys offense last season. But the question is, can they get better? This is Building the Board. I'm Haley Sutton, and we're going to talk about tight ends today, how we can improve this position, and of course, to do so, as always, I'm bringing in my guy, Patrick Nosey Walker from the other side of the field, it felt like <laughs> over there. Uh, Patrick, it's no secret that this tight end group, in my opinion, one of the most fun groups to cover last season. They were electric, they had good personalities, and they really showed their skills on the football field as well, but now we look ahead, uh, no more Dalton Schultz. Where does this leave the Cowboys in terms of looking at tight ends in the draft this year? Well, as you mentioned, Dalton Schultz no longer with the Dallas Cowboys signed a one year deal in this year's free agency with the Houston Texans. So while the Cowboys have a ton of optimism and justifiably so for Jake, Jake Ferguson and Peyton Hendershot, two guys who have very high ceilings, there is an issue with depth beneath those two players. This is where the NFL draft this year is really going to help them. You talk about guys like Darnell Washington, you talk about Shoemaker, some of these other guys that help make for a very robust position and prospect pool at tight end. The Cowboys are going to have a little bit of fun there, and it's going to be interesting to see at which round do they address that. And it's so fun, too, thinking about who can come in here with Lunda Wells being the tight end coach returning. He's a magician, as we saw last season. Let's get in a little bit, though, with the exit of Dalton Schultz and what that means for this tight end group. What does the Cowboys lose, I guess, in losing Dalton Schultz? Well, you're going to lose your security blanket for Dak Prescott. If you look at the targets and the production Dalton Schultz was able to uh, put on the field and put on film for the Cowboys over the past few years, he has shown that he is the number one target for Dak Prescott, not CeeDee Lamb, not Michael Gallup, as quiet as it might be kept. So that's going to have to be production replaced by Jake Ferguson, Peyton Hendershot, and potentially a draft pick. All right, well, they were the four horsemen last season. We'll see what nickname the tight ends get this year. But you mentioned a guy in there that I'm really interested in as well, and so is our resident draft expert. None other than the host of the draft show, Kyle Yeomans, is going to tell us someone who we should be keeping our eye out on. You guys are exactly right. This is a really, really fun tight end class. Actually, one of the best ones that I've scouted here over these last five years. Now, there were a number of different prospects that I could have broken down. Dalton Kincaid out of Utah, Luke Musgrave from Oregon State, even Michael Mayer from Notre Dame. But there's one guy that I just had a little extra fun looking at the film, and that's Darnell Washington from Georgia. My goodness, the size says it all. Six foot seven, 265 pounds. No, that is not an offensive tackle. That is a tight end, ladies and gentlemen. And here's what he can do. See the numbers, 45 receptions, nearly 775 yards. And then this is what he does against SEC opponents. He's not playing in the FCS. We're not talking about the Southland Conference here. We're talking about the SEC. This is straight seam going right up the inside hash mark. Just straight off the line of scrimmage, and I don't know how you miss a guy who's six foot seven. Mississippi State missed him here, and then he rumbles, baby rumbles inside that 15 yard line, gets all the way down to the 10. A little bit of yards after the catch, but that's not his strong point. His hands, his speed, and his acceleration are all strong points, but so is he as a blocker. Let's see what he can do in the red zone here. Very similar route. It's just basically right off the line of scrimmage, and then he cuts up the field, but then he comes over across back to the goal post. Good throw from Stetson Bennett on the back of the end zone against LSU in the SEC title game. He provided some of that red zone ability. The one thing about Washington as a receiver is he was never a featured part of that Georgia offense. He was more so a changeup. He was more so an added cherry on top per se for that offense because they had so many weapons. And that's just a byproduct of playing for the Georgia Bulldogs back to back national champs in the national championship game. He got to show off what he did as a blocker. This time he comes across the line of scrimmage, across the formation, boom, seal block for a first down run. Look at this again. Look at the power that he plays with. Sometimes he labors with his feet a little bit, but my goodness, 90 had no chance to get around Darnell Washington on that one. And then I've got one more. This one's just for fun. This one's against Tennessee. Here he is right here. You're going to feel bad for one of these Tennessee volunteers. Watch this. This is not even a blocking scheme. This is a route he runs. Boom. How, long, how far did he just travel? Can we see that again in full full, sp full speed ahead right here? Let's go ahead and go right at it. Ready? Boom. That's an SEC caliber edge rusher who just got knocked off his feet, absolutely depleted because of the power that Darnell Washington brings. Now, 
there are ways that his game can see an uptick. He needs some NFL coaching in the way that he runs his routes and the way that he cleans up his footwork and the way that he brings some of the technicality to the game. But power, size, speed, hands, all there enough to be a, not only a steal for somebody in the, maybe the second or the third round, but an impact player at the tight end position, which is something that the Cowboys have been looking for. I wish that we had a camera available while you were breaking that down <laughs> because there was so many times where I remember seeing him in real time this season and be like, who the heck is this guy, 6'7"? Mm -hmm. But you breaking down some of those blocks, my jaw was like, Oh my gosh, like, and he's not the typical tight end build either, so it's interesting to see, you know, how he's been able to kind of carve his own way and make a skill set for himself. Well, being a, a UGA alum, <laughs> such as Brother, myself, here we dogs, go. I've had the, the <laughs> benefit and the pleasure of watching every single rep of Darnell Washington since he committed and eventually put on a dog's uniform, and I can tell you unequivocally, he is the best blocking tight end in the country, and to your point, one of the reasons he was not featured for the uh, Georgia Bulldogs was because of the presence of Brock Bowers. You're yeah. not going to get number one reps if you're on the field with Brock Bowers, who is arguably the best tight end in the country. He would, he being Darnell Washington, would do very well to come into another situation where he may not be tasked with being that tight end number one up front, but he could challenge to be that maybe down the road. And I think he definitely brings that that type of potential because you mentioned it. As a run blocker and as even sometimes in pass pro, if they wanted to go max protection to protect Stetson Bennett to give some extra opportunities for Bowers, then it opened things up because he does move so well. He labors to get going, but once the momentum's running, good luck stopping six foot seven, 265 pounds. That's getting in the way of a bulldozer at that point because he does move so well. He's basically an extra offensive tackle that can go out and catch passes for you. If you have that kind of mismatch, it's a nightmare. And it's just unfortunate, really, that he's in a class like this one. This class, I've got three tiers of tight ends in the first 150 players. That's tiers, not three players. There's 10 total names in the top 150 in the tight end position alone. That's unheard of. I even went back and I re-racked Jake Ferguson and Peyton Hendershot and where I would rank them. Knowing what they bring to the NFL, I would, I would put Jake Ferguson as tight end 11. Ooh. And I would put Peyton Hendershot as tight end 16. Ooh. That's where they would be because of how good this tight end class is and just the, pro the, the possibilities and the prospects that are coming to the draft this well, year. Well, while that might be an unfortunate situation for Darnell Washington, it might end up being a fortunate situation for the Cowboys if they could steal Darnell Washington Huge. in the second round. Absolutely. And I was going to get into that too, Kyle. I'm glad you brought that up because when you see what Jake and Peyton were able to do last season in their rookie year, you obviously you expect some growth from them. You've seen them out in the offseason training with Dak as well but when you look at some of these other guys in those tiers as you mentioned is there anyone else who you think would fit this Cowboys scheme better knowing what Jake and Peyton offer yeah I think it's Dalton Kincaid right at the top of the draft he's my number one tight end you could maybe throw maybe a Michael Mayer from Notre Dame into that mix as well but Kincaid brings so much more as a receiver than he does so as a blocker he's an all-around player don't get me wrong but as a receiver Kincaid is much more polished than both Jake Ferguson and even Peyton Hendershot as much as Peyton showed that kind of ceiling from a receiving standpoint Kincaid brings that Mayer is more of the Jason Witten s type of player where he's going to be 10 yards from the line of scrimmage. He'll catch some passes. He's secure. He's reliable, but he mostly makes his living as a blocker and as a guy that's within uh, the 10 yards and maybe not after the catch. But Musgrave and Kincaid, those are both guys that would fit well into this system. And if the Cowboys are out of other options at 26, let's say linebacker dries up, you don't have one of those edge rushers that you really like or even some of those skill players, I think tight end is definitely a big-time possibility. All right. Well, a lot of things to keep in mind with that 26 pick. And Apparently a lot of tight ends to keep our eye on as well. Thank you guys so much as always. For Kyle, for Patrick, I'm Haley Sutton. This was Building the Board.